Hello, I'm Ronald White, and I'm going to run through a use case from a previous client that I had that was a um, requirement to take data from Salesforce and provide it to a third-party vendor, VNX and L payload. I'm going to give you a presentation of how I met this requirement in Informatica Power Center, and then how I also met, it, uh, met the requirement in SnapLogic. Some background. This particular client, they are a Salesforce customer. Anytime they've basically needed to meet a new requirement, they've just been kind of extending the account um, as an object. And what that kind of means on the ground is that if you were to look at their account as object, you'd see about 400 columns. And all the data is therefore column length. For the uh, third party vendors, and there's uh, a lot of examples that I could use, but this specific one is for store hours. They sell a lot of windows in the trade show community, and the concept of store hours and services by vendor is um, a very important. So the requirement for these third-party systems is always to have the data in an XML payload or a normalized format. So, and that is the essence of this requirement. It's to take the columnar data from Salesforce and transform it into a normalized target, generically, specifically an XML node. And again, the focus of this video is to demonstrate the requirement with Informatica Power Center and SnapLogic. Briefly, for visualization purposes, this is what the source would look like in their Salesforce systems. You can see that for every day of the week, there's an open and close time. And again, generically, this is what we want the target to look like. Um, you know, account, day, hours, stacked up. And I'm going to jump to the summary. I do encourage you to watch the video, but there's going to be a couple things, a couple themes that are kind of discovered. And I go into a little more detail in the video itself. But, you know, Informatic and Power Center, um, very capable product, very expensive, extremely cumbersome, um, all on site. Normal installation, um, you know, six to 12 servers. It, within the tool itself, though, uh, you're required to define a schema at every every step of the way. And in some mappings, you know, you could have a 10, 12 transformations and you're going to need to define a schema 10 or 12 times in that scenario. Um, that is, it, it's tedious, it takes a lot of time, and it also kind of opens you up to uh, transformation errors and conversion errors. Another thing about Power Center you might notice in the demo is there's there's three applications. I only show two. There's actually a third that you have to actually use to monitor. And within those applications, there's multiple interfaces. So within the uh, designer tool, there's an XML interface you'll see in the demo. And within the workflow manager tool, there's the concept of a, a task, a session, and a session instance, all with different interfaces. Though in the case of session and session instance, they're essentially the same. Um, but that leads into another problem, which is basically overlap and redundancy. Now, in Informatica Power Center, uh, and this has always been a problem with Informatica Power Center in my 10 plus years experience with it, is that there's just way too many places to mess with stuff and stuff that you don't need to mess with. And your only mitigation against that is a, is a very comprehensive standards and best practices enforcement. And, and frankly, uh, companies just, they're not mature enough to do that. SMBs, you're just talking uh, Japanese to them if you start talking about standards and best practices and configuration management plans and productive support plans. And um, so my point being is that there's a lot of overhead in the tool itself. Developer productivity with standing, which segues into my SnapLogic points. SnapLogic is a very capable tool. I, I go into this in more detail in a demo, but suffice it to say that I saw personally a six to eight time increase in productivity by using SNAP uh, versus using uh, Informatica Power Center. And also, too, um, something that's very, very noteworthy here is the unit testing is, is by design in SNAP logic. The, the concept of validation and seeing the data at every transformation within a pipeline is, is huge. You can't really do that. You, you can do that in Power Center if you know how to fire up the debugger and you know how to configure the debugger. And configuring the deb debugger is not straightforward in a lot of shops. You've got to open up ports. You've got to modify your host file. 
um, all sorts of stuff to get that to work sometimes. Um, in Snap, it just it's just there. It's part of the deal. And even in MuleSoft, you know, it, if you're gonna run the you're gonna run it in debug mode, it's kind of quirky. Most people just put message transformations in the pipeline so they can actually see the payload um, as it's running. Again, in Snap, it just works. And in Informatica Cloud, uh, flat out, you're just not gonna be able to do anything with unit testing. So but I digress. As compared to Informatica Power Center, again, a lot more overhead. And when it's Snap, it's it's just something that Snap does. So I was personally very impressed with um, the capabilities of the tool. So now I'm going to go ahead and jump right into the demo. If you have any questions about the material, or you'd just like to talk through some of this in any more detail, um, feel free to use this contact information at your discretion. So in Power Center, um, you have to actually enforce a schema for every single transformation of the data. So that said, this is an example of the source that I had to create. I actually did have to create this. Um, this one was easy because I was able to import it from Salesforce and uh, traverse the account relationship. And it does a good job of uh, converting the data types within Salesforce to something that Power Center understands, uh, generics. The target, on the other hand, was a little more complicated even just to define it because I didn't have a, uh, a, a well-structured sample to work with. So I actually had to fire up Eclipse and create my own sample. And in so doing, I had to define the data types and the position for you know every single attribute. So it was very time-consuming to do that. And then I actually had to import the file into um, Power Center. But it's, it's actually even more cumbersome than just that because an XML payload in Power Center basically is a, uh, a whole entire universe in and of itself where Informatica actually has to break down the XML payload into something it understands and what it understands are relationships. So that's what you're looking at here. The separate tool pops up to edit the XML and you're actually editing it as essentially an ERD diagram. As you can see here, you know, the, I have a, a top level object, which is nothing, essentially, uh, a null header, um, and then, you know, a business contact, and then all the child relationships to business contact. And, you know, the one we're going to focus on is store hours. But as, I, as you look at some of these other mappings, you're going to see, you know, some of these other guys as well. So I have a source and I have a target, and now I actually need to build the mapping. So the mapping, um, you know, there's about five or six jobs for this. So instead of hitting Salesforce five or six times, um, the design pattern that was used was to stage the data. So that's what you're looking at when you see these staging tables. Um, but for all practical purposes, this is a Salesforce source, and this is a uh, staging target which is my uh, business contact and again I have to actually load business contact and I have to define uniqueness of a uh, actually you know uniqueness within the entity based on this sequence generator and one other thing to notice here in power center is that you know the schema is enforced at every single solitary uh, hop that this data takes so if it's wrong here, or if it's wrong here, or if it's wrong here, that's going to cause me problems. And those problems could be truncation, they could be errors, or you know, just con silly conversion errors. For example, mapping a decimal to a character might give you 9.9900000 up to the precision you define, which is most likely what your client is not going to want to see. This design pattern that you see here where the ports line up is something that I uh, I like to do. It's very tedious, um, but in so doing, you save the, the crisscross, which is uh, an absolute nightmare if you've ever had to support anything in Power Center. But if you look at what's happening on the inside here, it's more or less just a straight mapping. There's some business logic with phone and billing country in here, but um, more or less, uh, the, the entire purpose of this mapping it's just to ascertain the business contact data from the source and to stash it away in an Oracle.
So the main purpose of this demo and the, the main use case revolves around store hours. This is actually the store hour mapping. And one thing you'll have to know, one thing that's worth pointing out is that to actually get the data in the, in the, in the structure that we want, we actually have to physically normalize it and make a normalizer transformation. Um, where this takes a business ID and uh, one to n number inputs and normalizes it, assigning an identifier to each output. That identifier is um, important because you cannot do any transformation without it downstream. So you can see here that you know one's a Sunday, four's a Wednesday, seven's a Saturday, and you might notice that there's no hard relationship here between these. This is just an identifier that the transformation is producing based on my inputs. And I point that out just because if you don't know what you're doing or um, you're not in a, um, a very mature shop, uh, you may it's very easy to break this, essentially. All I have to do is switch one of these ports around. In so doing, my output's going to be uh, cattywampus. And, and, not, and not in such a way that's very obvious either, I might add. But regardless, once the data is normalized, I have to force referential integrity between store hour and the business contact. So I actually have to do a lookup to that Oracle database to get the key um, that correspond, the corresponding foreign key for this record. And then, of course, I also have to actually generate a key for this record because you'll see when I build the XML payload that Informatica demands as much. So here we are at the third mapping where the payload is actually being built. Um, all, some of the stuff again is you know bigger than this use case, but you know the big one here is you know store hours and uh, business contact right here. Those two are uh, joined together and written to the target. And the RI is not optional. It has to be built into the code, and then also you need to explicitly um, call it out here at the target. You'll see that I have a business contact uh, primary key up here for business contact, and then every node I have to actually provide that business contact as a foreign key, in addition to providing the unique identifier for the node itself. So once you have all that done, you have your mappings. Actually execute a mapping with a session and within the session there's a plethora of options you can do a lot of stuff here and a lot of it is um, stuff that just people can't help but mess with uh, and you just don't have to default buffer block size for example but I digress my point in showing you this is you know at a high level you have to you have to define the connections and those are defined here um, interestingly, when you put a session into a workflow, you, you've actually created a session instance. Instance actually has properties of itself. Um, for example, I can change the connection here as well. So I point that out only to uh, highlight the fact that unless you're in a mature shop um, where every developer is brought up to speed, and onboarded, um, which is less and less the case. You're going to have to switch between um, two tools in, in three different work areas, the workflow designer, the task designer, and then the actual mapping designer, just to make sure that your job is doing actually um, what you need it to do. So that's how I was able to meet this requirement in Power Center. So now in Snap, the first thing I did was I just kind of, you know, this was my first pipeline. So I just went in here and I just said, hey, I want to just kind of take the data from my source and I want to do some, you know, minimal amounts of transformations to it. And that's what I did. And you can see here that all I did is I took the, uh, the open time and the, the closed time and I just concatenated them together and kind of shortened this down a little bit just to make it more workable and uh, also to get an idea how to better use the tool. Once I did that, here's where I really went astray. And this is kind of funny. And, and it goes to just some of the, the bad thinking that I brought with me. 
um, from Power Center to Snap. And because I because Power Center enfor forces you to normalize the data, I immediately just went down that road with this tool. And when I first built this, I thought this was extremely clever. And now when I look at it, it's actually very funny. I basically just take the data in this router and I go ahead and, and based on uh, you know my days of the week, I uh, route it to a uh, mapper. And then that mapper basically just does the transformation for that specific um, <clears throat> uh, day of the week. And I had to put a day of the week key in there too because you know it is actually required of me to sort the data. Um, they want to see the data you know, Sunday to Saturday. And then I mapped it and I uh, just wrote it out as a CSV file. And my next step was to actually generate the XML. And at this point, I just kind of reached out to um, Eddie of the professional services team and just said, hey, what's the best way to do this? And he let me down a path that was completely different from this, and thank goodness. Um, and where I ended up was this extremely simple pipeline that actually does everything that those three power center mappings with the three sessions in a one workflow was able to do. And it's simply mapping the data you know, from the CSV file to my XML payload, but I was actually able to you know, uh, explicitly define the X path, um, which at the end of the day gave me an output that looked almost exactly like this, which is which is my requirement. So to recap, I was able to, as an expert in Power Center, in a, uh, two days time it took me to get that built out, to get that unit tested before I could hand it off. I was able to do the same thing as a newbie in Snap Logic in about four hours. And of course, now that I have even a little experience with the tool, it probably took me four times as long as it's going to take me the next time. We throw around the term developer productivity, and it's it's not some um, abstract marketing concept. It's a it's a real tangible thing. And in this particular use case, and in my experience, I'd say it took me probably six to eight times more time to meet this requirement in Power Center than it did Snap Logic.